Ever since February 1985, Shrek has gotten his own form of work placement, which was comedian. Since Shrek is brilliant at coming up with jokes, it seemed as though he never needed to write a script for any of his performances. Even his iconic birdie move came out at times. And all of his jokes were unscripted. He came up with a lot of those out of the blue. But eventually, he would end up getting told by some to consider scription. I mean, yeah, you seem to have a big stabilizer you have beneath you, but it may start crumbling. Oh, what Tom Kiter, he's lot worrying on about. What we're trying to say, Shrek, is that you may have to start writing scripts for your comedy series. Why do you need a script for this? A script will be useful for a lot of reasons. A, to keep you right and for you to write your own script and not follow in someone else's footsteps or copying someone else's content. B, if you are running out of ideas for jokes, then you'll need it. Simple as that. C, and calling back to when I said running out of ideas, that would be evident in stuff like long pauses, repeated statements, and a lot of ums. All three of those will mash together to form an unscripted cringe fest. That is what will usually happen if you never had a script. Woody, where's your heart? Huh? You are right, mate. I'm off to my comedy the morning. Problem would be best for you if you write yourself a script. Och, why is everybody blattering me the day about my comedy and bloody scripts? It's not belittling. It's a form of constructive feedback. You must write a script for your comedy and practice it. And every comedy night should have a different joke for each episode and not repeating the same thing over and over and over again. If you repeat the same thing numerous times, it will get boring, and you will lose followers and fans, and ratings will go down, and your viewers will be like, Oh, this is boring. I want something different. That's what will happen if you don't concoct a script. Pa, pathetic shrub. Fair enough, but don't say I didn't warn you. Then I start. <laughs> Just let him do away with himself. Shrek is short on ideas for one-off jokes. He cannot think of any original jokes of his own. Then, if you notice that sometimes you get in a rut with the way you say goodbye to ever find yourself using the same phrase over and over again with everybody and you feel a little stupid, you know, like if you're leaving a party and you have to go and say goodbye to five or six people in a row and you say, okay, take it easy, 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 and you feel like a goddamn moron. <laughs> then, Shrek had an idea. But not a very good one. I can. I'll do just like him. That'll be really prosperous. He's dead famous. That'll get me dead famous. Cool. Guys, I've got a bit of cool news. The news is... Shrek is gonna be in the same comedian style as George Carlin. Oh well. Wait, what did you say? I said that Shrek was watching George Carlin and he is gonna copy him. So I guess they will both mash together as he wants to be famous. How cool is that? Actually, it's not cool. You may not know that, 
but copycatting somebody else's move is actually a bad idea. What? Why? This is plagiarism we're talking about. What you might not know is that plagiarism is actually a bad thing to do. But why, you may ask? Well, because plagiarism is known as using somebody else's stuff without crediting them properly or changing it up a bit. Well, Shrek's gonna plagiarise George Carlin for his comedy. Well, even if he said something like, this was originally done by George Carlin, I want to thank him and give him credit for his comedic talent. Well, no is the answer to it. If the addition of crediting the original guy who originally made this stuff is where the fault in Shrek's comedy gets a bit clouded, but it's still not a very good idea. Not even in the slightest. And how about word-for-word -word transcription? If Shrek is going to do that, then you better stop him. Word-for-word -word is like copying his every talk, or maybe not word-for-word, -word, but in a similar style and, and or atmosphericalized similar, similar. It won't get him popular. It will paint him in a controversial light. He has to write his own comedy jokes, not following somebody else's footsteps. Even if all that is really different between between is that Shrek is Scottish and George Carlin is American. So wherever you saw Shrek, go back there and tell that what he is about to do is a bad idea. Got it. Eh, uh, I'll try and glue all that stuff you said to me about plagiarism and why it's just bad in my head until it looks like I can try and get it out of the slightest no, donkey. Eh? Mule! Oh no, that's a bit of a donkey. Oh, alright, alright, I'm going. Shrek? Where's Shrek gone? He went next door for some reason. You, you saw him watching George Carlin and he was planning to copy him word for word transcription? Aye. What? Why didn't you say or do anything to him about it then? Simple. I'm letting him learn for his mistake the hard way. Are you all right, mate? It's quiet. Too quiet. Where is everybody? You all right, Chef? Ah, oh, you must have been Shrek. I remember someone who threw a Boris Johnston out the comedy spot of yours. The bumbling buffoon that he is. Indeed, even one day in spring this year, he came in here for lunch. And while he was waiting at his table, he gave himself a black eye with a paddle bow. <laughs> Aye, that's bojo all right, eh? So I want asparagus tart, roasted chicken and a double pork chop. All right, eh? Chefs, action stations! You ken something, Hazel? What? Have you ever seen Gordon Ramsay like at all? Hmm, let me think. No. Absolutely never seen him here since we had that pink spoon situation two years ago. That's weird, because at the end of last year, Mario sent Rex the dinosaur off to Italy and to see if he was there, and we have not received any feedback from him ever since. I hope he is needed. Me too. <laughs> uh, you there, tall asses and your laddie, do any of you ken where Gordon Ramsay is? Um, no, no, we haven't seen him anywhere. Oh, this is bloody ridiculous. I haven't seen him since, uh, heavens above Gordon Ramsay's been absent for about 17 bloody months. 
I'm sure he'll turn up eventually. Maybe just chill out about it. I think it's important you must focus on your comedy nights. That monkey is just like the minions from Russia, obsessed with bananas. Mr. Gru told me that. Wh- hey, that's Laran. I'm actually no surprised they did that. They do that all the time. Also, a reason why littering is a massive problem is because it powers up the seeds of climate change, all meaning the beginning of the end may come into view one day. Whoosh, eh, uh, a bit dark. Don't you think? Hello, everybody. I am... Oh, oh boy, I just want to say I am seeing such wonderful, friendly faces here. Wow! He's a bit like the Boris Johnson at our bit. So you get ten chicken nuggets, right? Hey guys, you wanna hear a joke? What? what? Well, you have to come outside for that. Uh, Mike, please stay here and if you or if you hear order eighty eight, that's our one. Okay? Alright, you lot go out and hear this joke of Sid's. So you get ten chicken nuggets. I suppose that's linked with the name of the brand. Think about it. The number of nuggets it gives you is linked with the number of this engine from Thomas the Tank Engine or the Railway Series. Since it's called McDouglas and Douglas is the number ten, it gives you ten nuggets. So let's track our way down. If it was called McDonald's, and since Donald is the number 9, it would give you 9 nuggets. If it was called McDuck's, and since Duck is the number 8, it would give you 8 nuggets. If it was called McToby's, and since Toby is the number 7, it would give you 7 nuggets. If it was called McPercy's, and since Percy is the number 6, it would give you 6 nuggets. If it was called McJames, and since James is the number 5, it would give you 5 nuggets. If it was called McGordon's, and since Gordon is the number 4, it would give you 4 nuggets. If it was called McHenry's, and since Henry is the number 3, it would give you 3 nuggets. If it was called McEdwards, and since Edward is the number 2, it would give you 2 nuggets. And finally, if it was called McThomas, and since Thomas is the number one, it would give you one nugget. Or, throw all that out of the window, and imagine if it was called McBoco's. Since Boco is number D5702, it would give you 5,702 nuggets. Ha ha ha. What? Why you all got those uncanny looks on your faces? It's creeping me out. You look like Momo. Actually, I think this could work for Shrek's comedy. What do you mean? Well, Shrek is choosing to plagiarise George Carlin on his comedian day, which is a bad idea. But if it's okay with you, maybe he could use your joke you just told us. Perhaps then his audience will be howling in laughter. Sure, I know that this is using a separate person's idea and not his total own, but I'll just let this be a one-off. So, do you mind if Shrek said that McDouglas' joke of yours on TV? Hmm. Just let him do whatever he wants while I make up my own Tom Kite. You are right, mate. Aye, I see you lasses in the background. Anyway, having a good time, are yous? 
Come on, you can do it louder than that. Come on, I want to hear it louder. So how's about this for a joke? And if you notice that sometimes you get in a rut with the way you say goodbye to every to ever find yourself using the same phrase over and over again with everyone and you feel a little stupid, you know. Like if you're leaving a party and you have to say goodbye to five or six people in a row and you say, okay, take it easy, 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 you feel like a goddamn moron. But the audience didn't respond. Did that no day any good? Then who's about this? <laughs> Classic, is it, no? But the audience still didn't respond. I've just come down for the Isla Sky, I'm no very big, I'm an off shy. All oh, the lasses say well, goodbye, Donald, where's your trousers? But the audience still didn't respond. Oh, bother! You don't want a piece of margarita? Then go take your face for a babinos and a raspberry. <laughs> oh, come on! So... I guess it didn't go as planned. Well, unless it's okay with Sid, Shrek could fix his dilemma by using Sid McDouglas's joke. Actually, I think he needs to come up with his own material entirely. I tried to get him to understand earlier, but he didn't listen. Maybe he just sees you as inferior to him as he is bigger than you. Oh, dear we with your fibs, Ash. Aye. And you can also do me a favour and go and take your face for a single fish. Is that Shrek? I assume it didn't quite go as planned. Nah, it didn't go as planned, you see. The peasantry viewers painted me into this fudging mess. Now I'm just a jolly green joke. Fiona was right here watching him watch George Carlin and getting the idea of copy his every speech. Then why didn't... <sighs> eh, I'll catch up with you. Oh look, Gordon's trailing wheels are off the rails. No wonder this episode is called Off the Rails. Eh, uh, how can we help you? Where is Fionn? Oh, there you are. Fiona, do you know anything about Shrek watching George Carlin earlier and nothing was stopping him from planning that act of plagiarism? Aye, I saw him earlier watching him. Why the hell didn't you take any form of action or involvement then? Simple. I'm letting him learn his lesson the hard way. Well, I guess he may have. I mean, he came in my room in fits of rage. Good. That's what he gets for what he did. Self-discovery is what it's called. Are you fudging kidding me? An ogre following in my footsteps? I mean... I get it. Sounds quite preposterous. An ogre trying to be like a human. Don't be silly, lol. Is he happy for what he's got himself into? Very much. If he will, me and this Shrek guy, a dachshund has been formed. And I'm not happy about it, Shrek. Not happy. And you know that he always does the birdie dance. I mean, come on! An ogre doing the birdie dance and raspberries. Even more from the fact that Boris Johnson did a few of those dances too. Bust. <laughs> God, the British are a bunch of crazy people. Perhaps some of the Drihar's jokes, such as the raspberries, one are maybe getting old, so any new yens? I mean, I yeah, mean, yeah, 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 you seem to have a have big, big stabilizer you have beneath you, but it may start crumbling. What we're trying to say, Shrek, 
is that you may have to start writing scripts for your comedy series. A script will be useful for a lot of reasons. A. To keep you right and for you to write your own script and not follow in someone else's footsteps or copying someone else's content. B. If you are running out of ideas for jokes, then you'll need it. Simple as that. C. And calling back to when I said running out of ideas, that would be evident in stuff like long pauses, repeated statements, and a lot of ums. All three of those will mash together to form an unscripted cringe fest. That is what will usually happen if you never had a script. It's not belittling. It's a form of constructive feedback. You must write a script for your comedy and practice it. And every comedy night should have a different joke for each episode and not repeating the same thing over and over and over again. If you repeat the same thing numerous times, it will get boring and you will lose followers and fans and ratings will go down and your viewers will be like, Oh, this is boring. I want something different. That's what will happen if you don't concoct a script. The harder you dream about it, the easier it will come true. The harder you dream about it, the more likely it will come back to you. Ah, I wish I had my very own jokes for my comedy. You are right, mate. Hey, I've got a joke for these all. You can, why they call it McDouglas. Well, I'll tell you why. Because they give you 10 chicken nuggets, and it's because the number of chicken nuggets it gives you is like the number of, of a certain Thomas engine. In fact, they were originally going to have it be called McDonald, but since Donald is number nine, they thought nine chicken nuggets was a bit incomplete, sounding and seeming. So instead of McDonald's, we have McDougal's. And since McDouglas is number 10, that is why this gives us 10 chicken nuggets. You seem, um, happy. Fuck, I am. My comedy is going to reveal itself. Oh, really? And how do you know? Just wait and see. Weird, but okay. You look puzzled. Sup, dude. Shrek seemed to have a smile on his face for some strange reason. Has he not forgotten about how bad his comedy performed last night? Is he maybe just hiding something? I don't know. I guess we'll just have to wait and see what happens then. Unless someone is bothered from their butt from their elbow to go to Shrek and question to him just what the heck he is up to. You are right, lassies and laddies. I don't know. I can you're no very chuffed. And come here to this again, considering that your airways hearing the same thing over and over and over again. And how it flopped last night, but I'm here to re-rail it all. Have any of you ever wondered why this food chain is called McDouglas? Well, I'm here to answer the question and debunk that myth. The reason why it's called McDouglas is because it gives you 10 chicken nuggets. Let's dig a bit deeper. Depending on the number of the soda engine, that certain number is the number of chicken nuggets you will receive from McDouglas. Since Donny and Doogie are 9 and 10, as you'd gain by the information that Thomas the Tank or anything related to it, is what it was original going to be McDonald's. And the first time that but there was a problem, if it would be called McDonald's, it would only give you 9 chicken nuggets. 
They felt that only 9 instead of 10 would be a bit on the incomplete and off feeling side. So instead of McDonald's, they instead called it McDougal's. So as a result, they gave you 10 chicken nuggets. So in the basic term, the reason it's called McDougal's is because you get 10 chicken nuggets from them per meal. Oh well, I wasn't expecting the reception to be this positive, but ah well, it, it seems to have worked this time. Are you alright, mates? Looks like you fixed your error, so congratulations. So, you've re reeled yourself? Aye, I suppose I'll have. Anyways, I'm off up the road to the plu for a chinky <laughs> tonight. As a result of the failure of Shrek's George Carlin knockoff performing as bad as it did proved to indicate that it was due to the weekly schedule of content output being a time crunch, with one episode getting pushed forward every week meaning there wasn't much time as properly needed for Shrek to revise his comedy content and make sure it's affordable enough to expose. The executives changed the content output schedule from one episode every week to one episode every two weeks instead, meaning there was enough time for Shrek to stabilise his stuff and craft it together to be up to snuff. And two weeks instead of one proved to actually work pretty well for Shrek. After all, sometimes some content outputings are better left unscheduled. Where am I? Sorry! Quick! Marty! Shrek! Anyone? Anybody here? Oh crap! I've got to get out of here fast! Is there any indicator on where I am? Where this tunnel ends at. <sighs> what a long road ahead I have before me. I'll find a way out of here somehow. Next time on Teammates of Britain, we will approach the Beamish and meet two old pals of Big Chris's who have some cool piece of machinery to showcase. Join us then.